Hello, my name is Kevin Young from Serpentarium Surplus and Moonlight Mantids, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about basic ooth care. There's a lot of great information out there, but I think we need just a little bit of clarity. Um, let's say you produced your own ooth. Uh, congratulations, I bet you're excited! <laughs> I was when I first produced a few of my own. Um, or you went out and you bought one, um, or online. And uh, a little bit of advice, please don't buy field collected ooth. I've bought plenty, to let, and I'm going to let you know, I've never had any hatch. Not one time. Um, I know a lot of people that did, and I know people that have spent good money on field collected orchid ooth, uh, 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 devil's flowers, all the, all the wonderful things you want. And the thing is, uh, none of them ever had, I've, I don't know anyone who got wild field collected ooth and had them hatch. I mean, it's, it, I think it's kind of rare. Um, I I don't know anyone personally that has had any um, that have hatched. Um, anyway, uh, you go to a breeder online and you buy an ooth. Uh, you get it home and you want to unpackage it. What I do is I stick them to these cloth lids. You're always going to... Um, there's a few different ways to do it. Some people I've seen uh, use uh, string, like like needle and thread, and they'll thread on parts of the stick on this side and this side. So that way there's no chemicals, no glue, um, no heat from the glue, or uh, and then make sure it's nice and upside down. And I'm going to explain this in a minute why it has to be upside down. But um, basically, you, uh, you get it, and you want to stick it on the flat side. I use um, a low watt to like 10 watt hot glue gun and I try not to get anywhere near the eggs and you can tell kind of where they are you can see all the little the nice little lines where there are nice little rows in this in this nice case and um, I glue around it or you know right on the bottom and you're gonna stick it on the flat side always upside down I use cloth lids um, to hold in uh, humidity but you still want ventilation if they get too humid and there's not real good ventilation they're gonna mold and that'll just kill your ooth um, if they dry out that kills them too. So you're gonna it's something you're gonna have to watch every single day. Um, basically, a lot of times you might uh, you might have a an ooth like this. And what I do with my females is I like to glue as many of these popsicle sticks like this. Um, I'll I'll hot glue them all over the tops into my uh, laying containers in like 80 ounce deli cups, and I'll hot glue tons of these little sticks up here, and sometimes even a few on the sides, right along here like that, and. Uh, they almost like 90% of the time, they lay their eggs like right on these sticks and they like laying their eggs on these sticks. Um, and that way you can just take them off and then you can hot glue it right there and you know, you can stick it right to the lid like this nice little Creo Ooth. Um, with the Creo Ooth, um, you can stick this one, say, um, into like a 16 ounce container because we know there's not going to be more than like 30 tops out of this little Ooth here. And what I do is I uh, stick a little bit of peat moss in there. You can use like paper towel or whatever you want to use. Or I like this peat moss; it stays nice and moist. And I'm a pretty busy guy, so I want to I want to know that uh, if I skip a day, they're not going to dry out on me. And basically, you want to check it every day, and maybe sometimes even mist it lightly. Um, most ooth um, don't require any extra heat. This is my insect room. And it, it's about, you know, I mean, I, I've incubated outside of this room before, just, you know, sticking them on a shelf or whatever. You know, uh, at 72 degrees is fine. Um, the, in here, it's like 75. Sometimes it gets kind of warm, like 80 degrees in here. And I just shelf them. I check them every day to make sure they haven't hatched. And I keep the uh, peat moss nice and moist. And I just, I cup them and I shelf them. And uh, like with this bigger ooth, this is a shield ooth, and it could, it could, it could hatch up to like 300 babies. We don't, it's a, it's a huge ooth, and they, they have, they're known for uh, producing quite a few like giant Africans and all those. Um, I'll stick that in like a 32 ounce cup for now, with the peat moss, of course. Check the, uh, check to make sure it's nice and moist. And room temperature. I don't do anything special with these. Um, some of your other ooth, um, and you'll know uh, if you manage to breed these. Yeah, by this point, I hope you know. That's, you know, how to how to make sure, how to incubate these. You know, sometimes it takes like 80, you know, 85 degrees, um, like, you know, like 80% humidity, like orchid ooth and stuff. And um, you, you'll learn about that later. But for these basic, basic ooth, like uh, Creos and all these, like this is a nice shield ooth. Sometimes you'll get your ooth um, and they'll lay them on the side. Um, and uh, I'm not going to remove this because it's already in a nice little cup. And there's no reason just to remove it to stick it upside down. Um, sideways is fine too. 
Um, I've had I've hatched them this way without without any problems. Basically, I took the female out of her cup. This is where she laid them. You know, there. I mean, she laid an ooth as big as she was. And um, I basically uh, put some peat moss in there, kept it moist, used a cloth lid, and changed it out with a. She used to have a screen lid. Um, put her into a, a different container. Um, made a little note when it was. Uh, it says when it was bred and then sometimes when it was laid and let you know kind of give you an idea how old the ooth is um most ooth hatch in like egyptian ooth hatch in like three weeks maybe four weeks um i've had some that have taken like two months but um i don't know any ooth that take a whole lot longer than that and that of course you know that's out there we don't we don't really know um a lot of a lot of it just depends and hopefully we know enough about a certain species that we're working with that we know you know how long it's it should it should take to hatch uh, make sure hopefully you check it every day and it stays nice and moist um if you can help it don't remove them out of there uh if, if it can stay the way they are you know make sure you keep it that way if you have these nice little jars where are they here we go um that i make and i have a nice little bit that cuts perfect circles and i screen them in and um, if for some reason your mantis lays them on screening or something like that, um, don't remove them from the sticks. Just glue the damn stick upside down or trim it or whatever you got to do um, to make it fit and glue it to a nice cloth lid. Um, like this orchid ooth was laid on screening. Do not peel the ooth from the screening. Simply cut the screening out and replace the screening. Um, you can't really leave it on the screening and leave it in the cage it's in because it could dry out. This is an orchid ooth. It needs to be kept slightly warmer, way more humid, and um, I just went ahead and cut it right out of the damn lid and uh, I'm going to incubate it just like this. Um, if you can help it, don't remove the ooth from where, whatever it's on. Um, hopefully it was late. Hopefully you guys planned ahead and made your, made, made your nice little lids and, and gave it area for it to, uh, to lay their ooth. And uh, you could just remove the stick, you know, cut it to size, and stick it right on your cloth lid. Peat moss, keep it moist. Room temperature, just don't throw it in the sun. Don't put it somewhere dark. Check it every day. Make sure it stays moist, not too, not wet. Um, you want to check on the species if you can to see if there's any good information out there, or maybe talk to somebody who's produced them before. Um, a lot of people I know, they just they don't do anything extra with them at all. They have them in these cups. They check them every day. And they're in a nice warmish area, and they'll hatch. Sometimes it may take a little bit longer. Um, depends on the species again. Um, the reason they're upside down. All right. If we know a little bit about mantises, we know that the youth is going to be upside down. Uh, the reason we want it upside down because when they first work their way out of the youth, they look like little worms, and they actually make a little thread off of the youth, uh, and they they thread down. And you'll notice that uh, they do like this little shed. And you'll notice like this cotton-like um, um, substance, uh, like little little sheds. It looks kind of like cotton. That's how you know if an ooth is already hatched. Um, that's actually, it's called worm skin. It's basically their first shed into life. They're born, they look like little worms, and they shed out of that little skin, and it's the worm skin. And when they're out of that, they fold out, drop off of that little thread, and they, they, they dry up after they fold out. And that becomes an L1 nymph. Um, and it technically already had a shed because as it hatched, it shed out of it. It's called worm skin. You might have um, a few that hatch early. They call them scouts. And you might have scouts two or three days before like a serious hatch. Um, I don't know why they call them scouts. Scout, it, they don't say, oh, hey guys, oh, the coast is clear. Let's all come out at once. It's more like, uh, you know, just an early bird. You know, you get a few that are early. And uh, those will hatch out. And... Um, that's a sign that the uh, major hatch is coming, and they're all about to blow out of there. Um, what I do is, after they hatch, I leave them alone for an entire 24 hours. I leave them alone for a whole day, and I let them dry. They usually don't eat each other. Um, with a lot of these species, there's going to be hundreds of them. Uh, be prepared. Um, before you try breeding, you want to know what to do with them. Some people are overwhelmed like they try to they hatch Chinese out. Um, if it's summertime, it is legal in the U.S. to throw them outside. Don't throw your excess nymphs outside because you don't want to freeze them or you don't want them to die or you can't handle the work. Don't breed them in the first place. We're not introducing non-native species into the U.S. because if you do, we you will ruin the trade for everyone. And right now it is so new and there are already a few, there are way more than enough um, restrictions and laws already 
on keeping exotic pets and definitely a lot of restrictions on insects. Like if you live in Florida, I'm almost positive you can only keep native mantis species. And I think there's like 14 um, plus Chinese and European, which are non-native but are so introduced, they're naturalized. That means that they're here and they're never going to leave. And they actually, they're actually destroying a lot of smaller species of our native uh, mantids because, um, but there's nothing we can do for, uh, about them. They're actually accepted here and you can't keep them legally. And you can throw them outside. Um, what I do is after a day, I, um, I, I uh, get a buddy or my wife or my wife's friend or whoever, and we'll uh, we'll take my huge, you know, fill to the top with uh, baby nymphs that are nice and dry now, and they're gonna start getting hungry and they're thirsty. And I drop them. I don't drop them. I open the lid quickly and take my cup, drop it in a nice tall white bucket, and I drop the, you know, put the lid in next to that or maybe in the lid in a separate bucket and have one or two people work out of it. What I do is I have thousands of these little five ounce cups that I've spent a long time preparing. It's got a little bedding in it already. When I'm not using it, it's dry. And um, I take a little bit of this nice screening, just like that, and I hot glue it on there. And there's holes in this, and these are five ounce cups, and they'll last in here for like, you know, two, three sheds. And hopefully by then I sold them, otherwise um, I've given them away. And seriously, don't throw them outside if you can't disperse them. You have a you have a responsibility as a hobbyist. Stick them in the freezer, kill them, throw them in formaldehyde, seventy percent alcohol, preserve them, do something, make, make keychains out of them, do whatever you want. Don't throw non-native species outside. Don't do it. All right, uh, you're gonna ruin it for everyone if you do. Um, for me, I I have I, you know I have I have a you know I have customers. I can sell these, and um, I have these cups all prepared. I have thousands, and uh, there's a few different ways to do this. A lot of people swear by this, but they will take the five ounce, usually five ounce cups, or sometimes like two ounce, or whatever they use, or little bathroom cups, or whatever, you know, like solo cups and all that. I like these because they're, you know, they're small and I can I can stack them high. And I think I get eighty of these in a tote, and I have like dozens of totes, and I, I've filled them all before. I've ran out of these and had to make a few hundred more, a whole bunch, a whole sleeve of these, which you can get if you're just, you know, you know, small potatoes and you just want a a couple. Um, you can pick this up at Walmart. They're, uh, sauce cups, I guess, but, uh, five ounce cups. Um, some people will take the, uh, lid of the five ounce cup, cup, and they will, um, uh, hot glue this, this thin material you can get anywhere. It's, uh, it's awesome. I don't know what it's called. My wife knows what it's called. She's girly. She found it for me. Um, and what she, uh, what you do is you, you cut a piece to size and you'll hot glue it around there and, uh, you'll... You'll take it and uh, you'll have your substrate. And this is really good ventilation. A lot of people swear by this. This is exactly what they use. Um, and if you have smaller species like um, Oxygarcellus, uh, you know, South American green mantis, or uh, say uh, boxer mantids, or whatever you got, this is preferred. The you know, only way you're going to keep them alive and keep them and have them survive is you're going to use this very fine stuff. Uh, the smaller the species, the finer mesh material. Because remember, we need to make sure that they can shed down from whatever surface they're on and this finer stuff is perfect for small species otherwise I use oh, where is it I use this lots of this uh, fiberglass uh, screening and uh, basically I glue it to the top here or you could even create these little holes and glue it there for better ventilation and I would recommend it but I don't have hours and hours and hours and hours and hours to waste on doing this because this works just fine too this works perfectly and I have a lot of these pre-set up. So what I'll do is, after get me and my buddies together, we'll um, throw, uh, put our mantids, um, our cup or our lid together, or either either one, depends how many there are and how much help you can get if you've got really good friends like I do. And um, we'll cup these. We'll have all these ready, sitting out, and these will be dry. We don't leave them wet because they'll get moldy or whatever. And they're already pre-set up. And um, we'll quickly, carefully, sometimes we'll use a paintbrush if they're really delicate and pick up all of our nymphs, you know, so we're not hurting them. Q-tips work too, or you'll just, you know, if you're like me and you're careful, you'll just, you know, force them on. Um, you'll cup them all real quick, and you'll just put these somewhere, and you'll catch as many as you can. If they get out, don't hope for them to survive. They're not going to. Um, they'll die within a day or two anyway, without any water or fruit flies or springtails or whatever you're going to feed them. Um, catch as many as you can. Hopefully you made a lot of cultures in advance, if you know how long they incubate for. Um... Also, uh, um, what I do is I don't try and feed or wa feed and water them right away. I'll catch them all first, 
and then I will cup them. Then I'll take my nice spray nozzle, uh, spray bottle, and I'll uh, water them. You know, they like to drink droplets off the side, just like the regular adults do. And then um, we, we give them fruit flies, and I do this every about uh, th three days that I feed them, every two or three days. Um, depends how big they are, how much they eat, and I'll check them maybe every two or three days. Um, sometimes it'll last up to four, four days with, uh, food in here. Make sure it's not moldy, um, if you have this kind of lid. Otherwise, if it's like this, you're going to want to spray them every single day because they're going to dry out quickly. Now, um, besides that, uh, let's look. Um, hmm. Buying is incubating, room temperature, um, some of these more exotic species are going to need a little bit more than room temp, and you're not going to be dealing with those right away, I'm pretty sure. Um, you know, room temperature, you know, check your humidity every day, make sure you're ready for nymphs, make sure you have a way to disperse nymphs. If you don't, do not throw your non-native nymphs outside. They're not going to survive. Honestly, you have an obligation. Stick them in the freezer, keep whatever you can take care of, um, freezing them is going to be a lot more humane than overloading yourself and letting them starve to death or, um, you know, letting them eat each other and all that other stuff. Well, you know, some people do that. They just still have an ooth and a nice tall exoterra and they'll just wait for, you know, until there's just a few big ones left. And I can't really say that's wrong, but, uh, it's not something I do. Um, and I, I do have to make a few more care videos for you, so, uh, if you subscribe, uh, I can help you out. I'm going to make some adult care videos. And very soon I got a special project I'm working on. And I want to show you how to breed mantids. You know, some of the more, some of the easier stuff and some of the more difficult stuff. Because I want more breeders out there. And I want us helping each other, just like this. Um, let's see. Oh, I have a female here, which went ahead. This is a banded flower mantis. And she laid her ooth last night. Hopefully you can see that. She's uh, she's kind of hanging out. Beautiful. This is a newer species. Probably one of the newer ones here in the U.S. And she laid her ooth right there. Um, it is right there. I, um, it's on a screen lid. And I didn't get a chance to stick popsicle sticks in this yet. So um, what I'm going to have to do is either cut around that and ruin the lid. And glue that to a cloth lid. Or I'm going to have to carefully use like a razor blade to get it off of there. Which, um, you know, I don't want to risk losing it. So I'd rather, rather cannibalize the lid than uh, hurt my nice little mantis here. Let me give it a little nice little close up there. Hey, how's it going? Hi, mama. You did a good job. It's a nice little ooth. Hope we, hopefully we see more of these. Alright. Um, well, I have a second. Since you're watching anyway, I'm going to show you some of my mantids. It's my violin. Just wandering around. <laughs> Let's see if I can get a nice close-up of you. No, it's not going to work too good. Nice big female, just hanging out. I had her out and she wandered off while I was stalking. Um, let's see, what else? That's about it. Uh, I hope you guys are producing your own ooth. Um, it's not, you know, go ahead and buy them, um, but uh, um, go ahead and post your comments and questions. You can like us or add us on Facebook um, at Serpentarium Surplus and Moonlight Mantids. Uh, thank you for watching.